today we will be getting into volume two of the story of civilization by Will and Ariel Drawn. And so we start every face. My purpose is to record and contemplate the origin, growth, maturity, and decline of Greek civilization, from the oldest remains of Crete and Troy to the conquest of Greece by Rome. I wish to see and feel this complex culture not only in the subtle and impersonal rhythm of its rise and fall, but in the rich variety of its vital elements, its ways of drawing a living from the land, and of the organizing industry and trade, its experiments with monarchy, aristocracy, democracy, dictatorship, and revolution its manners and morals, its religious practices and beliefs, its education of children, and its regulation of the sexes and the family, its homes and temples, markets and theaters, and athletic fields, its poetry and drama, its painting, sculpture, architecture and music, its sciences and inventions, its superstitions and philosophies, I wish to see and feel these elements, not in their theoretical and scholastic isolation, but in their living interplay as the simultaneous movements of one great cultural organism, with a hundred organs and a hundred million cells, but with one body and one soul. Accepting machinery, there's hardly anything secular in our culture that does not come from Greece schools, gymnasiums, arithmetic, geometry, history, rhetoric, physics, biology, anatomy, hygiene, therapy, cosmetics, poetry, music, tragedy, comedy, philosophy, theology, agnosticism, skepticism, stoicism, epicureanism, ethics, politics, Idealism, philanthropy, cynicism, tyranny, plutocracy, democracy, these are all Greek words for cultural forms, seldom originated, but in many cases first matured, for good or evil, by the abounding energy of the Greeks. All the problems that disturb us today, the cutting down of forests and erosion of the soil, the emancipation of women and the limitation of the family. Well, I don't think that emancipation should be the disturbing part, but some things that people might imply by that that's not entirely the same thing. The conservatism of the established and the experimentalism of the unplaced in morals, music, and government. The corruptions of politics and the perversions of conduct, the conflict of religion and science, and the weakening of the supernatural supports of morality, the war of classes, the nations and the continents, the revolutions of the poor against the economically powerful rich, and of the rich against the politically powerful poor, the struggle between democracy and dictatorship between individualism and communism, between the East and the West, all these agitated as if for our instruction the brilliant and the turbulent life of ancient Hellas. There is nothing in Greek civilization that does not illuminate our own. We shall try to see the life of Greece both in the mutual interplay of its cultural elements and in the immense five-act drama of its rise and fall. We shall begin with Crete and its lately resurrected civilization, because apparently from Crete, as well as from Asia, came that prehistoric culture of Mycenae, Gerines, 
which slowly transformed from the immigrating Akkaans and the invading Dorians into civilized Greeks, and we shall study for a moment the virile world of warriors and lovers, pirates, and troubadours that has come down to us on the rushing river of Homer's verse. We shall watch the rise of Sparta and Athens under Lycurgus and Ceylon. We shall trace the colonizing spread of the fertile Greeks through all the isles of the Aegean, the coast of Western Asia and the Black Sea, of Africa and Italy, Sicily, France, and Spain. We shall see democracy fighting for its life at Marathon, stimulated by its victory, organizing itself unto Pericles, and flowering into the richest culture in history. We shall linger with pleasure over the new spectacle of human mind liberating itself from superstition, creating new sciences, rationalizing medicine, sacralizing history, and reaching unprecedented peaks in poetry and drama, philosophy, oratory, history, and art. And we shall record with melancholy the suicidal end of the Golden Age in the Peloponnesian War. We shall contemplate the gallant effort of disordered Athens to recover from the blow of her defeat. Even her decline will be illustrious with the genius of Plato and Aristotle, Apelles and Praxiteles, Philip and Demosthenes, Diogenes and Alexander. Then, in the wake of Alexander's generals, we shall see Greek civilization, too powerful for its little peninsula, bursting its narrow bounds and overflowing again into Asia, Africa, and Italy, teaching the cult of the body and the intellect to the mystical Orient, reviving the glories of Egypt and Ptolemaic Alexandria, and enriching roads with trade and art, developing geometry with Euclid at Alexandria and Archimedes at Syracuse, forming in Zeno and Epicurus, the most lasting philosophies in history, carving the Aphrodite of Melos, the Aokaon, the victory of Samothrace, and the author of Pergamum, striving and failing to organize its politics into honesty, unity, and peace sinking ever deeper into the chaos of civil and class war, exhausted in soil and loins and spirit, surrendering to the autocracy, quietism, and mysticism of the Orient, and, at last, almost welcoming those conquering Romans through whom dying, Greece would bequeath to Europe her sciences, her philosophies, her letters, and her arts as the living cultural basis of our modern world. And I'm not sure how much Greek we're going to see, so the pronunciation is going to be off, because, you know, I can read the Greek sounds and all that. Um, this is from 1939. Um, some of the series is too new to, um, again, there's notes, but this, this appears to only be by William Durant, um, because, so maybe he got married during the series, um, so Greek words not established in the English usage, A should be as in father, E as in Nay, I is in machine, O is in bone. What about the aw? Um, because they have multiple O's, right? U as in June, Y like the French U, or the German U. Well, E U would be, you know, but um, A I and E I like Isle. I E and I would it would be what it'd be like, but O U is in root. Yep. C is in tar. C H is in Taurus. G 
as in go, z like e, z and m. Um, there's maps at the beginning and the end of the book. Let's, let's look at that. Now, there's a lot more to these places and these maps. But in relative terms, despite all our hills and all that, the earth is so smooth by comparison. Especially when you regard the fact that it's not a sphere, but like kind of flat and fat in the middle. And... You know, that's, that's where Gog and Magog lives. One of the things about graven images is you might not know until it's identified whether it's an individual acting on behalf of what's considered a deity or a representation of some limited being or psychological projection of a deity. I haven't talked much about that, but definitely will at some point. And see, Perry Kloss. So I'm not going to say some of these things right because they're going to render their Englishized versions. And there's so much that can be said about some of these things of art. And maybe that's what I should do with the Freud's art collection, is go all mythological on it. But the Greeks represent a stepping away from an entirely religious life, or at least not for the laity. And they also represent a period of art. There initially was the teaching art. The Greeks are more idealized forms. There is things to learn. Like, I think you could render an appropriate tarot deck, not just an art deck, with Greek styles. And then, of course, things got worse under the... most of the churches, because the Bible said no graven images. And they also kind of didn't want people to have the level of experience that was inherent to the early church and not for people to understand meaning and purpose so much as just, you know, fall along with the church. So people had their own lives. They had a full life. Um, they did their thing here and there. Sometimes they got very motivated and did all sorts of sacrifices. Some, which I would say never should be legal, but there's going to be a military power or something that does that right.